As darkness falls in the dry Kenyan bush, the construction workers of the Kenyan-Uganda Railway sleep soundly. A rustle is heard outside of the tent, when suddenly, a lion rips through the canvas, grabbing the ankle of its screaming victims and tearing him away into the night. He is never seen again. For years, animal experts have been baffled by the man-eating lions of Savo and what drove the unique pair to feast on human flesh. Today, on Nutty History, we're roaring across Africa to examine how and why the man-eaters of Savo earned their namesake. But before we hunt for answers, subscribe to our channel and let us know what extraordinary historical events you'd like to hear about next. Construction on the Kenya-Uganda Railway Bridge had barely begun in March of 1898 when the terrifying attacks began. Lieutenant Colonel John Patterson arrived on site as the civil engineer supervising the project. Just a few days later, one of his porters went missing. After a search, his mauled and mutilated corpse was discovered. Fearing a lion might be the culprit, Patterson set out the following day to find the animal responsible. Instead, he discovered more bodies. For the next nine months, the railway workers lived in a constant state of fear as the lion attacks grew more brazen. Overnight, the Savo lions would enter the camps in the darkness, dragging victims from their tents. In this jungle, the lions were definitely not sleeping tonight. As one worker wrote, Bones, flesh, skin, and blood. They devoured all and left not a trace behind them. The rail workers attempted to mount defenses to stop the terrifying predator. After all, can't humans outsmart a couple of big cats? They instituted night curfews and sentinels to keep watch. Who wants to volunteer for that job? They held campfires and used drum beating in an attempt to scare the lions away. No luck. They even built homemade barbed wire fences out of whistle-thorn trees but the lions managed to leap over or crawl through. Chaos and terror reigned. During one attack, so many workers climbed up into the same tree to escape that the whole thing came crashing down to the ground. Luckily, the lions had already selected a less agile victim that night. The railroad workers began to flee the area by the hundreds, which seems fair given the hostile work environment. The British colonials sent officials to intervene and get the project back in working order. Apparently, they thought paper pushers were their best bet to taking down two bloodthirsty lions. According to Patterson's account, a district officer, Mr. Whitehead, and his assistant, Abdullah, arrived at the train depot in the evening and were immediately under attack. Mr. Whitehead, despite this unfortunate name, was lucky, escaping with four claw marks down his back. Abdullah was killed by the lion, proving that all you have to do is selfishly sacrifice your peers for your own survival. Wait, are we saying that? More officials arrived, along with 20 armed Indian infantrymen, to kill the Savo lions. But instead, it was actually Project Lead John Patterson who ended up being their secret weapon. Though on the project for his engineering expertise, Patterson had experience hunting tigers as part of his military service in India. As the lions stalked him, he began to stalk them in return, setting up traps and hiding out in trees to ambush them. After many unsuccessful attempts, Patterson was able to shoot one of the lions in the hind legs, but it escaped injured. Finally, in December of 1898, Patterson killed the first of the man-eaters. The lion clocked in at nine feet and eight inches and required eight men to bring its body back to camp. Over the course of the next 20 days, the second lion was shot twice before Patterson was able to kill it with three more rifle shots. He claimed the animal died gnawing on a fallen tree branch, still trying to reach him. After the lions were killed, construction resumed and the railway bridge was swiftly completed within the next two months. Of course, it was then destroyed less than 20 years later in World War I, proving humans to be the reigning force of destruction once again. Back in business, Patterson kept the lion skins for a time as rugs in his home. Eventually, he sold the skins and skulls of the Savo man-eaters to the Field Museum in Chicago, where they remained safely and securely in display. Still, for years, everyone wondered what drove the animals for their strange lust for human blood. One popular theory held that if the lions were hunting humans, they must have been lacking their more traditional food sources. At the time, the Savo region was in the midst of a 13-year drought. 
The area is generally drier and hotter than other African plains, one reason that male lions like these two are maneless. The area was also experiencing an outbreak of rinderpest, a cattle virus that might have killed off most of the lion's food supply. However, scientists later conducted isotopic analysis to determine the lion's diet and found that humans only made up about a third of what they ate. This led them to believe that people were more of a supplement to the Savo lion's diet rather than main source. A human a day right before you work out. While it's possible the drought and rinderpest were a contributing factor, they probably weren't the main reason the animals turned to human consumption. The Savo River, where the construction work took place, had a dark history before the man-eating lions entered the sea. It was also a major path to the caravans of the Arab slave trade. The death rate for slaves was high, especially due to the sleeping sickness, a disease transmitted to humans from the Africa Seisei fly. The bodies of slaves that died were dropped directly on the route, which may have led lions to scavenge the remains. Human remains of the Hindu railroad workers may also have been in the area from ritual invitation, which was an abbreviated cremation process. Both could have caused the lions to develop a specific craving for humans. The most horrifying theory of all? That perhaps the Savo lions simply killed for the fun of killing. While John Patterson claimed that the lions killed a whopping 135 men, Today's scientific research concludes that they actually only ate about 35 people between them. It's possible the discrepancy is due to a little bit of boasting on Patterson's part, but it's also possible that the lions didn't eat all or any of every person they killed. Human encroachment threatens the lion's territory and habitat and continues to be one of the main catalysts for lion attacks today. There's no doubt that the laborers of the Ugandan Kenyan Railway were behind enemy lines. The lion's unstoppable hunting of the workers certainly makes it seem like there was some level of play involved. And lions are one of the few species other than humans to kill for sport. Savo lions in particular have more testosterone than the average lion, which might be a reason for their notoriously aggressive behavior. So what's your theory on the Savo lions? Was it hunger? Was it supernatural? Was it sport? Let us know in the comments along with whatever nutty history you want to know next.